got my love thrown out When things don't go to plan I kind of lose my mind all right, so today we're going to be doing a quick review on the new updated Emacs Tiny Hawk Freestyle, the version 2. Now here is the version 1, which I checked out quite a bit ago, which was a pretty solid little park flyer. However, it did have some problems with it, mainly with the camera being the biggest issue because of the way the frame was. Um, you could not swap the camera. There was only two adjustable camera mounts. You couldn't change it easily. And the stock camera that came on it was questionable. You know, it was passable, but it definitely was not great. So now on this new updated version, you can see up front, we have a run cam nano, which is really good to see. You're gonna get absolutely great picture quality out of it, just like on a full size five inch quad. You can see they redesigned the front with sort of these side um, cage plates here so that you can adjust the angle very freely, which is awesome. And then they also did upgrade the VTX as included. So now it will do 25, 100, and 200 milliwatts. So if you're flying in a park um, through some trees, you can definitely get a little bit more range there. Overall, everything else is pretty much the same. They tweaked the frame just a little bit. You can see there's now like a cool sort of speckled skin on it um, compared to the original white one. Overall though, very, very similar. You can see there. Um, for the motors, we're still using the same uh, Emacs 1103 7000 kV, and they're spinning the 2.5 inch Avan Rush props here. And then back we have the familiar uh, battery connector, so this does come with two 1S batteries. Um, now this is the solid pin connector, so it is better than nothing. It's still on XT30, however on this application, this is a pretty low current quad. This is nothing insane, this is more of a cruiser or a freestyler, <laughs> hence the name. Um, so these are okay. And this works, the two batteries just go together, you strap them on top plate, and they plug into this connector to go into series for 2S. And they do it this way because if you're coming from the other Tiny Hawks or any other other quads, they use all the same batteries, so you should be able to use them for this, which is pretty nice. So that was just a quick intro for it. The most notable things that changed is obviously the camera and the VTX, so let's just go ahead and start some flight footage. Um, this was at a park that I got to, and now keep in mind, I did set this to 200 milliwatts, however, I think, since I didn't unlock the VTX, I think it was still stuck at 25 milliwatts, since the Emacs products always do come locked, so keep in mind of that. Um, the way you unlock it is you press and hold the button as you power it on, the VTX button, and that should unlock all the channels as well as the power ranges. I'm pretty sure it was locked 25 milliwatts, which is why my signal was not great. And I could not fly it much further away, um, and that, that is partially due to the quad. Once again, this does have a FreeSky D8 receiver. You can see the antenna coming out the back. So it's not the best receiver in positioning. However, my internal module of my transmitter is pretty much burnt out which is why I use Crossfire on my racing quads because that's a different module, so it's fine. Um, but when I do fly these micros, it still works well enough. But keep in mind, that's why I couldn't go very much farther away than I did in the video here. Comparing the flight experience to that of when I flew the original Tiny Hawk Freestyle, it is very, very similar. Nothing crazy in terms of power, just really smooth and easy to fly overall. And now that you have the new Runcam Nano, and it was a nice, bright, sunny day out. It was just so enjoyable to just fly this guy around, especially since we're in quarantine here. I haven't flown in a while. Um, it was really nice to just cruise around. I was getting about three to four minutes, which may seem like it was a little bit less than before. However, that doesn't make sense since they're the exact same setup in terms of powertrain. So I'm not sure if I was using a slightly old battery or if I was just flying it harder, I'm not sure. Um, in terms of weight for this guy, fully ready to go without the batteries, we are getting 55 grams, and then with the two batteries, we're getting 81 grams. So obviously plenty, plenty lighter than the 250 gram limit. Now I'm just gonna keep talking a little bit about this while the rest of the footage plays up there. Um, so who is this for? Um, just like what I said for the original one, I think someone who is, I'm not gonna say beginner, but it's a little bit easier to fly and it's not an insanely powerful machine. So I'd say it's more of an intermediate quad, especially um, definitely for outdoors and small parks. If you are a beginner or if you are wanting to fly indoors, definitely don't get this. Obviously it's 2.5 inches with no prop guards. I think the um, actual Tiny Hawk 2 with the smaller design, obviously the ducted um, prop guards is much, much more suited to indoors and beginners. And this is kind of the equivalent, but in an outdoor version. 
Oh, and I did forget to mention, obviously it comes with the traditional Emacs carrying case, which has a cutout for it, which includes the USB charger and the batteries. However, if you want to use this, you have to take the props off, um, which is a little bit annoying, but it's still a nice little case that you get for the price. And in terms of the price, the original one is about $105, and this one's about $115 now. So it did get a little bit of price increase, but that totally makes sense since these run cam cameras are definitely not cheap and it definitely is a really nice performance boost. So I think that um, price increase is perfectly justified and it's probably just in their cost of getting the cameras versus these super cheap nano ones that they had before. So I'm just gonna let the rest of the footage play out and then I'll finish up the review. Days passes by And most long for a place that they never find I'm afraid I wake up when I die And it is too late to climb any mountain Time is up the ashes The blood running through our core It's best to not feel sorry when it's over All right, so that's all done. Let's conclude this quick little review of the Tiny Hawk 2 Freestyle. Once again, just a nice update from the original line. If you liked the original Freestyle, you will like this one with the new camera and the new BTX with higher power. If you already have a Tiny Hawk Freestyle, I, it, it's, it's up to you if it's worth upgrading. You could just buy the frame and the camera and swap all the electronics over. You'd still have the old BTX, but at least you have the new camera because that is the main difference between these two. 
Um, but if you are a beginner coming from something like the Tiny Hawk or a Whoop indoors, I think something like this would definitely be a good first step outdoors in a small park. And then you can move on towards something like a five inch racer like this once you increase your skill some more. And of course, I always recommend using the simulator when learning. So yep, that was just a quick review of this new guide. There'll be links down in the description below if you're interested in it as well. I'll leave a link to a line of sight video I did with this guy since it'll be pretty much identical to this um, if you want to see how it flies line of sight. So yep, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.